Richard Dabaji, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us. What I found particularly interesting is your argument that there is a, a vacuum in the award of heraldic matters in Australia that we still seem to depend on the United Kingdom. As I understand it, you have a different view on that. I do, quite considerably different from yours, I think. Uh, also the, the sovereign of Australia is clearly and has been since somewhere between 1901 and 1951 been the Queen of Australia. The title itself was not adopted until somewhat later uh, with the Royal Styles and Titles Act. Uh, but the sovereign has been separate. Pa in parallel with that, the sovereign of the United Kingdom remained the sovereign of the states. And so until the Australia Acts in 1986, we had the curious circumstance that you had the Queen of Australia for the Commonwealth matters and the Queen of the United Kingdom for state matters. In 1986, that nexus was entirely broken and the A Queen, separate from the Queen of the United Kingdom, became Queen of the States. It's a bit unclear whether that became another manifestation of the Queen of Australia or there were separate Queens created for each of the States. My own view is that the latter occurred. Uh, in, but shortly after that, uh, when there was still a confusion over whether there should be imperial honours or Australian honours, and when it was uncertain how various aspects of the sovereign's uh, font of honour powers would be exercised, agreement was reached that most, a lot of those powers would remain with the Queen in Buckingham Palace. That was in direct contradiction of the terms of the Australia Acts, which in relation to the states says that the Queen, that all of the powers of the Queen are to be exercised by the Governor, except the power of appointment and dismissal of the Governor, and except when the Queen was in Australia herself. And so we had the rather odd circumstance where the, the, the Premiers were advising the Queen to do certain things and she was doing them in Buckingham Palace and they had no validity. Uh, the Order of Australia was set up and uh, a fair degree of autonomy developed, but still, e even until this year, the states were deferring to Buckingham Palace in relation to the use of the title the Honourable, for instance, in the states, which clearly is a power exclusively vested in the Governor unless the Queen is here, which is a rare circumstance and probably won't occur again during the current reign. Uh, Heraldry uh, is ex the power in relation to heraldry has traditionally been exercised in relation to the empire and later the Commonwealth by the kings of arms of England, as distinct from those of Scotland and Ireland. And in more recent times, they have started using the title of the Queen of Australia in their grants to Australians. And much as I would like the Queen of Australia to delegate her heraldic powers to somebody, she has now never done so. And she certainly hasn't delegated her heraldic powers to the heraldic servants of the Queen of the United Kingdom. On that, she would act on advice. Would she, she would only act on advice. So she she would be advised by the Australian government. The Australian government, as to or the state governments, if they wish to have state heraldic authorities. So, are you suggesting then that we follow the Canadian practice? Yes, the, 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 the Canadian model is a very good one for Australia to follow. Uh, there, the. Queen of Canada delegated her powers, her heraldic powers, to the Governor General of Canada, who then exercised those powers to establish the Canadian heraldic authority. And it was all done very formally. I think Prince Edward came with the, uh, the delegation. Australia could well follow that model. I don't know that a delegation of that nature is necessary any longer. I think it's accepted that the Governor General would have those powers to exercise if she were given the advice to do so. Thank you.